Welcome back to Mental Math. We are presented with two almost identical infinite expressions. On the left, an infinite tower of square roots of two. On the right, an infinite tower of cube roots of three. This one converges beautifully to a clean integer value, while this one, despite its similar structure, supposedly doesn't. What is the hidden mathematical reason for this difference? Let's investigate. Let us begin with the expression that supposedly makes sense. First, we assign the value of this entire infinite expression to a variable. Let's call it y. The key to handling these infinite objects is to find a self-similarity. Notice that the expression in the exponent is identical to the original expression. Therefore, we can substitute y back into the equation, collapsing the infinite tower into a finite one y equals the square root of 2 to the power of y. To solve for y, we must first eliminate the square root. We achieve this by squaring both sides of the equation, which yields y squared equals 2 to the power of y. This is a transcendental equation, which can be difficult to solve algebraically. However, we can often find integer solutions by simple inspection. Let's test if y equals 2 is a solution. The left side becomes 2 squared, and the right side becomes 2 to the power of 2. This simplifies to 4 equals 4, which is true. So y equals 2 is a solution. Let's test y equals 4. The left side is 4 squared, which is 16. The right side is 2 to the power of 4, which is also 16. This is also true. So y equals 4 is another solution. This presents a logical problem. A single expression cannot have two different values. Is the answer 2 or is it 4? To resolve this, we must introduce the concept of stability. Our infinite tower is a sequence defined by iteration. Such a sequence can only converge to a stable fixed point. A fixed point is a solution to the equation x equals f of x. The stability test is simple. If the absolute value of the derivative of the function at the fixed point is less than 1, the point is stable, or an attractor. If it's greater than 1, it's unstable, a repulsor. Our iteration function is f of y equals 2 to the power of y over 2. First, we need to find its derivative. Using the chain rule for exponentials, the derivative f prime of y is the original function, 2 to the y over 2, times the natural log of the base, 2, times the derivative of the exponent, which is 1 half. Now, let's test the stability of our first solution, y equals 2. We substitute 2 into the derivative function. The exponent simplifies. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Next, we can cancel the 2s. This leaves us with the natural log of 2, which is approximately 0 0.693. The absolute value of this result is less than 1. Therefore, the solution y equals 2 is stable. Next, we test our second solution, y equals 4. We substitute 4 into the derivative. The exponent becomes 2 and 2 squared is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Using logarithm properties, 2 times the natural log of 2 is the natural log of 4, which is approximately 1.386. The absolute value of this is greater than 1. Therefore, the solution y equals 4 is unstable. Since the sequence can only converge to a stable fixed point, we have our unambiguous answer. The expression is equal to 2. Now, armed with this stability test, let's dissect the second expression. We'll set its value to z. By self-similarity, this becomes z equals the cube root of 3 to the z. Cubing both sides gives us z cubed equals 3 to the z. By inspection, we find an integer solution at z equals 3, as both sides become 27. But we can no longer trust this apparent solution, 
we must test its stability. Our function is g of z equals 3 to the z over 3. Its derivative is 3 to the z over 3 times the natural log of 3 divided by 3. Let's test the point, z equals 3. Substituting 3 into the derivative, the exponent becomes 1. Oh, and the 3's cancel, leaving the natural log of 3, which is approximately 1.098. This value is greater than 1. The integer solution is unstable. The sequence does not converge to 3. This is why the expression doesn't make sense in the way we'd expect. Its obvious integer solution is a mathematical illusion, a repulsor. So where does the sequence actually go? A graph of the function provides the answer. Plotting y equals x against y equals 3 to the x over 3, we can see the intersections, our fixed points. Here is our unstable point at 3. But here, at approximately 2.478, is another intersection. This is the stable fixed point, the true value to which the expression converges. Why does the integer solution work for 2 but fail for 3? Is there a general rule at play? Let's find out. Let's define a general expression where we use the nth root of the number n. Following the same procedure, this simplifies to x to the n equals n to the x. For any integer n, there is an obvious solution x equals n. The crucial question is, for which values of n is this integer solution stable? The general function is h of x equals n to the x over n. Its derivative, h prime of x, is n to the x over n times the natural log of n, divided by n. We apply the stability test at our fixed point of interest, x equals n. We set up the stability condition. The absolute value of the derivative at n must be less than 1. The exponent n over n simplifies to 1. The n in the numerator cancels with the n in the denominator, leaving a beautifully simple condition. Since n is greater than 1, its natural log is positive, so we can drop the absolute value bars. The stability condition is simply that the natural log of n must be less than 1. To solve for n, we can exponentiate both sides. We raise e to the power of both sides. e to the natural log of n is just n, and e to the power of 1 is Euler's number, approximately 2.718. And here is the stunning conclusion. Since n must be an integer, the only value of n for which the simple integer solution is stable is n equals 2. For n equals 3, 4, and all other integers, the tower will always converge to a different non-integer value. Let's revisit our original problem with this newfound understanding. The case with 2's makes sense because 2 is less than e. The iteration is drawn to the stable integer solution. The case with 3's doesn't make sense in the same way because 3 is greater than e. The integer solution is a repulsor, and the true value is a less obvious non-integer limit. What appeared to be a simple puzzle is in fact a deep statement about the interplay between integers and the fundamental constant e. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this problem, give it a like and subscribe for more. See you next time.